welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम यो खिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी आर फोकस्ड ऑन द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ समास इन संस्कृत नेमली the avyayi bhava samasa the bahuvrihi samasa and the dvandva samasa currently we are focused on the avyayi bhava samasa an extremely important type of samasa in sanskrit the features of the avyayi bhava samasa can be represented in a simple equation of this kind mentioned on this slide where you have x and y as two different two independent entities in terms of the word form as well as the meaning as well as the accent x has a different word form y has a different word form and they both stand out as independent and separate forms their meanings are also separate and they each one of them has an accent the x and y and their meanings they are semantically connected semantically related given this background the speaker of sanskrit decides to merge them together and generates one output in the form of x y which is now one unit in terms of the word form as well as also the meaning and also the accent so x y has got three features namely aikarthya aikapadya and aikasvarya ekarthata ekapadatta and ekasvarata to show the interrelation of x y with its constituents x and y we say that in x y which is one unit x acts as the head now in the avyayi bhava samasa x is invariably without a few exceptions always and avyaya and indeclinable and xy as one unit is also termed as avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha now this tells us how significant x is how x acts as the head as far as the word form is concerned anavyayam avyayam bhavati similarly also as far as the meaning of the avyaya is concerned becomes the head in the entire avyayi bhava samasa so if xy is to be related to any other outside word in the sentence that interrelation has to go through x it cannot go through y independently independent of x so these are the formal features of the avyayi bhava samasa urva padartha pradhanah prayena avyayi bhavah in the ashtadhyayi the grammar of panini on which the entire paninian grammatical tradition is based 
द अव्ययी भाव समास विधायक सूत्रस आर स्टेटेड इन टू पॉइंट वन अव्ययी भाव समास इज ट्रीटेड एट डिफरेंट प्लेसेस इन द अष्टाध्यायी अमंग स्टेम द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट वंस आर द समास विधायक सूत्रस सूत्रस विच प्रिस्क्राइब द समास सूत्रज सूत्रज विच ले डाउन द कंडीशन फॉर द प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ द अव्ययी भाव समास सूत्रज विच प्रिस्क्राइब द कंडीशंस अंडर विच एन अव्ययी भाव समास कैन गेट फॉर्म कैन बी जनरेटेड सो दीज आर कॉल्ड समास विधायक सूत्रज and all the samasa vidhayaka sutras in the ashtadhyayi are found in 2.1 and 2.2 the avayi bhava samasa vidhayaka sutras are found in 2.1 precisely from 215 which is avayi bhavaha up to anya padarthecha saudnyayam which is 2.1.21 incidentally 2.1.22 is tatpurushaha and then the sutras from 2.1.22 onwards they prescribe the tatpurusha samasa for a long section until 2.2.21 included and we have already studied the tatpurusha samasa and these particular sutras in the first course on samasa which is part of this series so we say that from 215 up to 2121 is a section of sutras which prescribe the avyayi bhava samasa so if you want to know a particular sutra prescribing an avyayi bhava samasa it has to be from this particular section then the samasa anta pratyaya vidhayaka sutras sutras which prescribe the suffix that is added at the end of the samasa they are stated from 54107 up to 54112 as far as the avyayi bhava samasa is concerned very small section and swara vidhayaka sutras namely the sutras which prescribe the accent on the avyayi bhava samasa they are scattered here and there in the ashtadhyayi mainly in 6.2 to be precise 6.2. 1 2 etc this is how in the ashtadhyayi the avyayi bhava samasa is treated now we are focused on studying the samasa vidhayaka sutras right now and we have studied a number of sutras beginning with avyayi bhavaha and we studied the big sutra avyayam विभक्ति समीप समृद्धि वृद्धि अर्थाभावात्यय संप्रति शब्द प्रादुर्भाव पश्चात यथानुपूर्व्य योगबद्ध सादृश्य संपत्ति साकल्यांत वचनेशु एंड देन वी ऑल्सो स्टडीड सम मोर सूत्रस लेट अस कंटिन्यू स्टडीइंग सम अदर सूत्रस इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी स्टडीड तिष्ठदगु प्रभृति नीच अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सूत्र इन विच सेमेंटिकली द कंपाउंड्स द समासस are bahuvrihi samasas but formally they behave like the avyayi bhava samasa and so formal behavior takes precedence takes preference over others and therefore panini without hesitation enlists those samasas in the avyayi bhava section albeit without going into the detailed derivation panini declares those samasas as avyayi bhava samasas let us proceed further and now study 2118 which is pare madhye shasthya va there are four padas in the sutra pare madhye shasthya and va pare is 1/1 of para which which means other shore madhye is 1/1 of madhya which means in the middle because both these words are in prathama ekavachana the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam applies and terms them as upasarjana as a result these two words will occupy the initial position of the avyayi bhava samasa so we have pare and madhye as the first member of the avyayi bhava samasa now 
so even though the pratipadika is para and madhya it is a specific restricted domain because of which para is substituted by pare but it is para as far as the grammatical derivation process is concerned the third word is shasthya which is tritiya ekavachana or 3/1 of shasthi the sixth triplet or genitive case and the other word is va means optionally words continued are avyayam from 216 sahasupa from 214 Samasaha from 213 Avyayi bhavaha from 215 Samartha padavidhi from 211 Vibhasha from 211 Having put all these words together we get the following meaning of the sutra two subantas namely para and madhya in the form of pare and madhye are compounded with another semantically related subanta which ends in the genitive case optionally and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhav optionally i repeat two subantas para and madhya in the form of pare and madhye are compounded with another semantically related subanta which ends in the genitive case optionally and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhav optionally i repeat two subantas para and madhya in the form of pare and madhye pare madhye subante are compounded samasyate with another semantically related subanta समर्थेन सुबंतेन सह विच एंड्स इन द जेनेटिव केस षष्ठ्या वा ऑप्शनली एंड द रिजल्टेंट समास समास इज कॉल्ड अव्ययी भाव अव्ययी भाव ऑप्शनली विभाषा दस वी कैन से दैट दिस इज एन एक्सेप्शन ऑफ द षष्ठी तत्पुरुष समास as far as the position of the words are concerned because in the shashti tatpurusha samasa the word ending in the shashti occupies the initial position of the samasa because the word shashti is stated in prathama vibhakti in the sutra shashti which prescribes the shashti tatpurusha samasa shashti is 2.2.8 which we have already studied in the first course on samasa in this series now let us take the concrete example the meaning to be conveyed over here is the other shore of ganga ganga yah param the other shore of ganga somebody is standing on this side of ganga river on this shore and he is pointing towards the other shore saying something about the other shore of ganga and so we have ganga yah param as the laukika vigraha and because of this particular sutra the word para which is stated in prathama vibhakti therefore it becomes upasarjana therefore it occupies the initial position of the samasa by the sutra upasarjanam purvam so we have pare plus su plus ganga plus nas as the alaukika vigraha from which the process of the derivation of the samasa begins now because of this particular sutra 2 and 18 we get the samasa saudnya avyayi bhava saudnya and then we get the pratipadika saudnya by the sutra krutadhita samasascha and then we delete su and nas by the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho and then we get pare plus 0 plus ganga plus 0 when we join these together we get pare ganga now pare ganga is an avyayi bhava 
samasa and avyabhava samasa is the one that denotes neuter gender by the sutra avyayi bhavascha stated in 2.4 now once it is clear that an avyabhava samasa is denoting neuter gender the sutra raspo napumsake pratipadikasya applies and then the samasa pare ganga has got a which is a long vowel at the end and this is shortened because of raspo napumsake pratipadikasya and so we get the finally derived compound output as pare ganga this is the avyayi bhava samasa an example of 2118 Now, when we use it in the sentence, we add the suffix su after it. So we have pare ganga plus su, and then because pare ganga is an avyayi bhava samasa, so it becomes an avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhava ch one four one one forty one, and then we apply the sutra avyaya dap supaha, and su gets deleted. This is what happens normally, but there is an exception sutra which says that. If an avyayi bhava samasa ends in short a, then this su does not get dropped, does not get deleted. Rather, this su gets substituted by am, and so now we have pare ganga plus am. Then we apply the sandhi rule, and we get the form pare gangam, which can be used in the sentence. Now the sutra Navyai Bhavad Atom Tva Panchamya also says that the Panchami Vibhakti immediately after an Avyai Bhava Samasa ending in short a is not deleted or nor it is substituted by anything else. So the Panchami Vibhakti remains intact as it is, and so when we have Pare Ganga plus Ngas, this Ngas gets substituted by. Tanga singa sam inatsya ha, and so we get pare ganga plus at, and then we apply the sandhi rule, and we get pare ganga at, pare ganga at anaya. Bring something from the other shore of Ganga. May you bring from the other shore of Ganga something, and we get the form pare ganga at. similarly if the meaning intended is in the middle of ganga that is ganga yaha madhyam this is the laukika vigraha and so we have the alaukika vigraha in the form of madhya plus su plus ganga plus ngas now the word madhye is stated in this sutra 218 in the prathama vibhakti therefore it becomes upasarjana and therefore it occupies the initial position of the samasa so we have madhya plus su plus ganga plus ngas now because of 218 this becomes samasa a vyayi bhav samasa and then we get the pratipadika saudnya and then we apply supo dhatu pratipadika yoho and we delete both the sups so we have madhya plus 0 plus ganga plus 0 so we get madhya ganga as the compound form now avyayi bhava samasa is declared to denote the neuter gender by the sutra avyayi bhavascha which appears in 2.4 and then we apply the sutra raspo napumsake pratipadikasya which shortens the final a in ganga and then we get the finally derived compound output madhya ganga now this madhya ganga is an avyayi bhava samasa and therefore by the sutra avyayi bhavascha 1141 it becomes an avyaya so when we add the suffix su after madhya ganga we have madhya ganga plus su and now because madhya ganga is an avyaya su is to be deleted by the application of the sutra avyaya dap supah but there is an exception sutra which says that if an avyayi bhava samasa ends in short a then this su is not deleted rather it is substituted by am so we have madhya ganga plus am and then finally we apply the sandhi rule and get the form madhya gangam we have already studied 
the sutra na vyai bhava datom tu apanchamyaha and that is what we are applying here now when we add the panchami vibhakti after madhya ganga that panchami vibhakti is not deleted neither is it, is it substituted by am on account of the same sutra na vyai bhava ato am tu apanchamyaha so the panchami vibhakti suffix rite is retained and then we have madhya ganga plus nasi and this nasi gets substituted by at by the sutra tang nasi nasa menat syaha so we have madhya ganga plus at then we apply the sandhi rule and we get the form madhya gangat madhya gangat anaya may you bring something from the middle of ganga just like you had pare gangat you also have madhya gangat now we also notice that which is a very important fact we also notice that there are two option words in this sutra one is vibhasha which continues from 2111 and va which is explicitly stated in this particular sutra vibhasha has a different function and va has a different function altogether vibhasha gives an option about the anitya samasa and va gives an option about the shashti tatpurusha samasa this is why there are two options so because of va we have the forms like ganga param and ganga madhyam also derivable in the same semantic condition ganga yaha param and you can have madhya gangam which is an avyayi bhava samasa but we also have ganga para and ganga param and ganga para will be a shashti tatpurusha samasa and so it won't be an avyaya and it will be declined as a usual normal nominal root or pratipadika is declined similar is the case with ganga madhya they will mean the same thing as ganga yaha param or ganga yaha madhyam something about pare and madhye even though the words are para and madhya they are the ones which are mentioned in the sutra in prathama vibhakti they are stated to be taking the form pare and madhye in the process of compounding that is what is the point in stating those two words are as pare and madhye so the tradition says that samasa sanyogena ch anayo ho ekan ekaran tattvam nipatyate so when para and madhya are compounded in the way an avyayi bhava samasa is compounded para and madhya becomes ekarant ending in a para becomes pare madhya becomes madhye this is what is the intention of panini in stating these two words as pare and madhye this is a very peculiar feature of the avyayi bhava samasa stated by this particular sutra in pare madhyam and pare gangam we have no avyaya and yet it is called avyayi bhava samasa which is a true exception of the avyayi bhava samasa the most important reason why these are called avyayi bhavas is their formal behavior like that of the other avyayi bhava samasas containing one avyaya inside so the formal behavior is given prime significance after having studied 2118 let us study 2119 which is sankhya vamshena there are two padas in the sutra sankhya and vamshena the pad sankhya is in the prathama vibhakti prasankhya means a number it is in the prathama vibhakti so the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam applies and terms the number denoting word as upasarjana and then it will occupy the initial position in the samasa vamshena is the tritiya ekavachana of vamshya 
3 slash 1, which means the descendant of the family. So, Vamshiyana means with the descendant of the family. The word Vamshiya is derived from the word Vamsha. Vamsha means a family. And Vamsha means one which is part of, one which is born into a family. Born in a particular family is called Vamshiya. Which is explained in the tradition in the following manner. Generally, there are two types of families considered everywhere. Vidyaya Janmanava, Praninam, Eka Lakshana Santanu, Vamsha Ittyabhidhi Yate. Vidyaya is by learning, Janmana is by birth. Either by learning or by birth, continuity of one thread of signs of the beings, Eka Lakshana Santanaha Praninam is called a family. Vamsha Ittyabhidhi Yate. I repeat, Either by learning or by birth, vidyaya janmanava, continuity, santanaha, of one thread, eka thread of signs, eka lakshana, of the beings, praninam, is called a family, vamsha ityabhidhiyate. So, the family is of two kinds, two types, one by learning, vidyaya, and the other one is by birth, janmana. A family by learning, family by birth. Any individual may belong to a family on these features, either by birth or by family. Words continued from the previous sutras are these, Avyayam from 216, Sahasupa from 214, Samasaha from 213, Avyayi Bhavaha from 215, Samartha Padavidhi from 211, Vibhasha from 211. All the meanings put together, we get the following meaning of the sutra. A subanta denoting number is compounded with another semantically related subanta which denotes lineage of the family optionally and the resultant samasa is called avyayi bhava. I repeat, a subanta denoting number Sankhya Subantam is compounded samasyate with another semantically related subanta Samarthena Subantena Saha Samasyate which denotes lineage of the family Vaushyena optionally Vibhasha and the resultant samasa Samasaha is called Avyayi Bhava Avyayi Bhavaha as is the case with the previous example, again no avyaya is part of this particular samasa. Let us take the example, lineage by learning, that is the theme, vidyaya vamsaha. So if we have to say two sages belong to the lineage of vyakarana, two sages belong to the lineage of vyakarana, vyakarana is a branch of learning and two grammarians are referred to in this manner. They belong to the same branch of learning called Vyakarana. So we have Dvau Muni Vyakaranasya Vamsya as the Laukika Vigraha. So we have Dvi plus Au plus Muni plus Au as the Alaukika Vigraha. Dvi being the Sankhya occupies the initial position of the Samasa. So here we get the Samasa Saudhnya by this particular Sutra, Sankhya Vamshyena. Then we get the Pratipadika Saudhnya. So we apply Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho. So we delete both the Sups and we get Dvi plus zero plus Muni plus zero. And then we join them together. We get Dvi Muni, meaning two sages belonging to the lineage of Vyakarana. Now when we decide to use it in the sentence, we add the suffix su after it, so we have vimuni plus su, and then we apply the sutra avyayadap supaha. Dvimuni is an avyayi bhava samasa, and so it is an avyaya because of avyayi bhava cha 1141. And so when we add su pratyaya after it, 
it gets deleted by the sutra of vyayad apsapaha and so we have vimuni plus zero and we get the finally derived form dvimuni in the sentence when we use it in the sentence we say vyakaranasya dvimuni vartate there are two sages in the lineage of vyakarana vyakaranasya dvimuni vartate here vyakarana and dvimuni they are referring to two different entities similarly when we say that three sages belong to the lineage of vyakarana we get the output trimuni vyakaranasya vartate there are three sages of this vyakarana this is the description of the tradition of paninian grammar trimuni vyakaranasya vartate now trimuni is an avyaya and therefore we have vartate as the verbal form in the singular now who are these three munis as far as the paninian grammar is concerned they are panini katyayana and patanjali panini is believed to have lived around 500 bc up to 350 bc e katyayana is believed to have lived around 3 3rd century bc e and patanjali is believed to have lived around 2nd century BCE So we have dvimuni vyakaranasya as well as trimuni vyakaranasya Sometimes when the speaker intends to highlight the identity between these two three sages and the vyakarana so the vyakarana gets identity relation with the trimunis the learning that is vidya and vidyavan that is the learner when they are stated to be identical then we say dvimuni vyakaranam vartate trimuni vyakaranam vartate so paniniya vyakarana is called trimuni vyakaranam when the speaker wants to highlight the identity between the vidya that is vyakarana and vidyavan the three sages therefore the tradition says yadatu vidyaya tadvatam abhed vivaksha bhavati tada samanadhikaranyam bhavati so this was the example of the lineage by family by learning now let us look at the other example where we have the lineage or family by birth so the meaning to be intended over here is 21 sages belong to the lineage of bharadwaja who is a rishi so we have bharadwaja naam ekavimshatihi भारद्वाजा नाम एक विंशति ही नाउ एक विंशति इज अ संख्या देर फर इट ऑक्युपाइज द इनिशियल मेंबर ऑपोजिशन ऑफ द समास सो वी हैव एक विंशति प्लस सू प्लस भारद्वाज प्लस आम एंड देन वी गेट द समास सौज्ञा बाय दिस पर्टिकुलर सूत्र देन वी गेट द प्रातिपदिक सौज्ञा एंड देन वी अप्लाय सुपोधातु प्रातिपदिक यो हो एंड डिलीट बोद द सुप्स so now we have ek vimshati plus 0 plus bharadwaja plus 0 and so now we get the finally derived compound output as ek vimshati bharadwaja this is an avyay bhava samasa so it becomes an avyaya and so when we add su suffix after ek vimshati bharadwaja it is to be deleted by the sutra avyayad aap supaha however we know that there is an exception sutra which says that if an avyay bhava samasa ends in short a this su is not deleted rather it is to be substituted by am by the sutra navyay bhava datom pavanchamyaha and so we get a ekavimshati bharadwaja plus am as the next stage and so we get ekavimshati bharadwajam as the word to be used in the sentence this is how the examples of this particular sutra can be described and also explained next we continue to study how the processing of the avyay bhava happens with the remaining conditions stated in the subsequent sutras how the processing progresses to derive the final output in the form of 
a nominal root or pratipadika and how that output behaves in the sentence in the coming lectures. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.